Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the honorable community, good afternoon. We are gathered today to celebrate a remarkable accomplishment, namely the success of the University of Dundee program in Egypt, and also to celebrate the soft opening of the largest facilities for continuous dental education in Egypt. First, we leave you with this short documentary summarizing the fruitful and successful journey of cooperation between the Arab community and the University of Dundee. Ladies and gentlemen, after watching the short documentary and without further ado, I present our first speaker, Professor Mark Hector, Dean of the University of Dundee. As I was saying, it's my first visit to the city of Cairo, and I'm very much enjoying my visit, and it's a tremendous honor and privilege of me, for me to meet you all here. Um, my role today is just to give you a few minutes about the University of Dundee and what we stand for, and then that'll be followed up a little bit more by um, Professor David Byrne, who will talk a little bit more specifically about the, um, the things that we're doing within the university. Just to give a little bit of history about myself, I've been in Dundee as its um, dean for the dental school for just over two and a half years now. And before that, I was working at the University of London, where I was the associate dean or the deputy dean for education in the dental school at Queen Mary College. Outside my university work, I was um, very much involved in the International Association of Pediatric Dentistry, my own background is as a pediatric dentist and was president of that organization for two years, um, having worked, done various jobs, including being secretary and treasurer for many, many years, and also editor of the International Journal of Pediatric Dentistry. And so the IAPD is very close to my heart, and, and actually I'm very pleased to say we have members from Egypt in that organization. Since moving to Scotland, I've also become involved in the Royal Colleges, um, particularly the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, and I'm sitting on their dental council. So that helps look after or oversee the training of postgraduate students um, within the UK and, and, of course, further afield. Just to put it into perspective of where Dundee is, Dundee is in, in Scotland, as you know. It's a relatively small city, but it's north of Edinburgh, about 50 miles north of Edinburgh. And I came down here yesterday, and it took me just over 12 hours from door to door, which is really isn't too bad. Flying, moving to Edinburgh, flying to London, then transferring from London. And so it's easily done within a, within a day. Should you want to drive, I think it would be crazy to do so. It will take you three days, okay? <laughs> David Benn put this slide together for me, and it sort of, the suggested route is down through France and Spain and across the, the north coast of Africa, and I think probably not a good idea. Um, but I think the important thing about Dundee is it's a, a city which is one of the only cities in Scotland which lives on the north side of a big river, so it faces to the south. And by facing to the south, it means it's a very bright city, a very sunny city, and it has its own small microclimate. The river you can see there is the River Tay, which is the largest river in Scotland, in, in the UK, actually, the largest river in the UK. <clears throat> Dundee has a long history, not as long as Cairo, but it has a very long history. Um, it is, used to be a big industrial city. Um, famous for its whaling industry, for fishing, uh, dealing with whales, and also in jute, which is a cloth making industry. Now it's moved away from the big industry and it's moving into culture, into education, and um, the more of the finer things in life, if you like. It's also got a reputation as being one of the friendliest cities in, in Scotland. And that is actually very, very important as all of our visitors who come to visit remark on how well they're received, how friendly everyone is in the city. <clears throat> when we focus on the university, 
The university campus sits right in, on the edge of the city centre. It takes our students maybe five minutes, maybe six, seven minutes to walk from the university into the middle of town. So it's very, very close. And it's a compact university <clears throat> which has a very, very clear purpose. And it's very, very focused on the excellence of its educational um, provision. It's very focused on the impact that it makes on people's lives. And it's absolutely there to try and transform the lives of everyone who it touches. Be they the students who come to Dundee and study, be they students who work from further afield, or, be, or other people who get involved with the university. The dental school is about to celebrate its 100th anniversary. Um, it was founded in 1916, um, so just before, or just in the middle of the, um, the First World War. And initially, its, its academic links were with the University of St. Andrews. St. Andrews is a small city about half an hour's drive to the south of Dundee, and is very, very famous not only for its university, but also for its golf courses and other things. So people who like golf go to St. Andrews. Um, so that happened in 1929. The first professor of dental surgery was made in, in 1939, so 10 years after it joined with St. Andrews. And it became formally part of the University of Dundee in 1967, which is when the University of Dundee was officially founded. Although before that, it had been an educational center for many, many years. The dental hospital itself and the dental school um, was the, the, the tower you can see there was built in 1969. Um, and we have the same building now and it's, it's been maintained extraordinarily well. It's very, very well equipped inside. But we still have the old buildings either side, the original buildings either side. In terms of how does the dental school rank, um, for a relatively small school, we're actually doing very, very well indeed. Um, every year in the UK, every single student in every single school and faculty in the UK who is in their final year of their degree are asked to complete a national student survey. This ranks, and this is used as a rank, one of the indices for ranking the universities. People thinking about coming to study in the university will look at this because it gives a very good measure of how the students perceive the quality of their courses. So did they feel welcome? Did they feel supported? Did they feel well educated? And last year we were very pleased to say the, Uni Dun the Dundee Dental School was ranked number one in the UK um, based on the student returns. We're also ranked as a dental school in the top five by the major university ranking league tables in The Guardian and in the Good University Guide, um, which are the UK um, national rankings. Within the school, we are uh, we're very well equipped. We have very good, high quality, modern facilities. This shows a picture of the simulator classroom where we can teach operative skills, restorative dentistry skills, um, to the students, we, we can accommodate up to about 35 students at a time in this facility. And the students do a lot of work here before they move on to, their, on to looking after patients. We've also got various laboratory facilities where they work, whether it's for the making of the prosthodontics, <coughs> crown bridge dentures and that sort of thing. And that is a very, very valuable part of the training. And within the hospital itself, we have 110 or 120 dental chairs, which mostly are used by the undergraduates. But within that, we also are responsible for the training of hospital specialists. Um, so they'll get their training alongside or in parallel with the um, dental students. We're also responsible for training dental nurses, dental hygienists, dental therapists. So there's quite a lot of education provision going on in the school. I've mentioned the teaching laboratories, and these are state-of-the-art laboratories where both undergraduates and postgraduates receive a lot of their technical training. <clears throat> in terms, although the school was primarily set up as an undergraduate training school, um, and we, we are training about 60 
65 or 67 students every year. A major effort has been made in the last few years to develop the postgraduate training at master's degree level. And at the moment, we, these, this list is the, the courses we have going at the moment or just about to start. A, a master's in prosthodontics has been going on for several years now and is highly successful. We have laboratory-based courses in oral cancer, which is a, a big problem in Scotland particularly. It's also a big problem around the globe and is increasingly recognized as such. And so we're training people into, into understanding the biology of oral cancer. And also, alongside colleagues in the medical school, we have master's programs in, oral, in, in cancer biology. Starting this year, we have a master's program in oral, bio oral biology which is the, the specific basic sciences linked to dentistry. And this course is particularly designed for those who want to end up as teachers in oral biology. And there'll be quite a big um, teaching the teacher type component within that program. Dental public health is a very important subject in the art school, which I'll come to in a moment. And so we have a course starting up in dental public health and likewise, within the UK, so much of the care we deliver has to be evidence-based. And so a new course is being developed in evidence-based dentistry. And of course, we have the orthodontic program, um, which so many of you are familiar with um, in this school. Also starting this year, which um, is not on the list, we have a, a master's course in dental forensics, so forensic odontology, which is also um, highly successful. The orthodontic program is unique in the university in that it is this partnership with the ASCDE and it's, we use it as a, the way it's set up as people will be familiar is it's, it's a flying faculty model so the didactic, the theoretical, the um, basic scientific elements of orthodontics are delivered by faculty members within Dundee and elsewhere in the UK who travel to Cairo on a very regular basis to deliver the courses to the students. And then in parallel, there's a clinical training program which takes place within this facility. And we'll hear more about that in due course. There are currently 30 students studying on this program in the different years. And the whole purpose of this is to enable um, people who want to train in orthodontics to train to a very high standard and enable them to provide high quality care um, and high quality orthodontic treatment to um, patients in people's home countries and home cities. Within Dundee itself, we also are very, very proud of our research heritage. The um, main thrust of our research in the dental school is very focused on um, public health, I suppose, in, in a broad sense. We have a big unit of population health, the oral and dent the, um, dental health services research unit. We have a unit studying cariology and the dental caries, and in particular how the indices are developed to monitor dental caries and measure dental caries. And we have a, a, a research line in craniofacial anomalies, particularly orofacial clefting. But again, the real focus of that is around the identification and prevention of oral facial clefting, um, both from a sort of societal point of view, from a behavioral point of view, but also from a genetic point of view. In terms of the research, the whole thrust is around improving health, and in particular improving health around um, immediately the, the Scottish population, but the wider UK population as well. And two areas of in particular note are, is the development of the so-called child-friendly dentistry, where it's always difficult to look after children, and it's de developing ways of, de of managing dental caries and managing oral health problems in children in a way which doesn't actually upset the children and allows them to grow into people who actually will accept dental care very, very easily. And linking to that, um, in a sense, we are also the WHO um, collaborating center for oral facial clefts, which is led by Peter Mossy, who we saw a picture of earlier on, and is part of the um, part of the program delivering the orthodontic teaching here. Dundee Dental Hospital School is also the center for 
a number of very, very large clinical trials. These are multi-million pound clinical trials um, going on in, in Scotland. It's got the Child Smile program, which is battling um, early caries in preschool children. We have the Interval, the Fictional iQuad trial, which are big, big trials, which are actually the whole purpose is to try and develop the evidence base for delivering much, much better primary care service within the UK. And of course, those lessons can then be translated elsewhere. We also are very proud of the fact that we're recruiting and we have lots and lots of requests to do PhDs in the school. At the moment we have 35 PhD students studying with us and they come from different parts of the world, um, 10 countries at the moment are represented. And we also have recently put onto the ordinances of the university a unique structured PhD where the people can do a science-based PhD but link it in with ongoing clinical training. Um, so there's clinical attachment as part of the PhD studies. It makes the course a year longer or maybe two years longer, depending on how much clinical input there is. That was a small video made by um, a postgraduate student in the university, just to explain to you how he felt very welcome and how his family was made to feel very welcome within the university. And the school also boasts some outstanding research staff. Um, uh, Professor Jan Clarkson at the top there who was, was an IADR distinguished scientist and below her um, Dr. Nicola Innes was an IADR um, senior clinical researcher prize and these are both recent prizes for their work around in terms of Nicola's work around the child friendly dentistry and within with Jan it's all around the evidence base around um, providing dental care within the community. And I think, so in, to sum up really, the whole point about the dental school in Dundee is its focus is very much on improving oral health of people and giving its students the skills and the attitude and the right attributes in order to deliver an improving oral health. We're very good at our teaching, we're very good at our research and the whole point about the university and about how the dental school works is it's trying to make an impact locally for our local community but also more wide within the UK and globally. And in, in parallel with the university, which tries to be a transformational university, we are seeking to be a transformational dental school. So on that note, um, we see the sun setting over the River Tay. I should say thank you very much for welcoming me here and thank you very much for listening to me. <clears throat>